good morning everyone this is ranger rob from ranger rob country living and uh, of course come out in the morning and i've got my german shepherd barking at absolutely nothing so today is another test uh that we need to check on it is uh we put a couple more broccolis in the floating rafts interested to see how they're doing we did the sacrificial <laughs> beef tomato to see how well it handled the colder temperatures <clears throat> and we also learned do not let the chocolate lab into the greenhouse or they'll eat your little <laughs> seedlings so uh now that we're filled with all that education let's uh an insight <laughs> let's go to the greenhouse here and find out how well everything was doing and to make sure I don't have any water leaks okay we've entered the greenhouse and amazingly enough the little um, beef tomato looks great moving right along let's go check the broccolis and uh, actually they look pretty healthy and this little guy I think might let, might make it and uh, the other thing I noticed was when I first put them in they were kind of droopy they're perky mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know what they say we want to be perky well that's what we got so I might introduce a couple more uh, broccolis in here and uh, I'm actually very happy with the little tomato plant let's take a look at that again no effect from the cold weather let's see what we had this is a little unit we keep in here wow i only got the 42 degrees last night how nice is that right now it's 83 degrees in here i believe it so yeah um everything's looking good uh the dutch bucket systems are not running right now uh they uh come on every every hour for 20 25 minutes so yeah looking good hey girls and this is just a little follow-up on uh, towers uh, down below here I planted radishes and you can see uh, they're doing very well and uh apparently, hey <laughs> yeah i gotta dog proof everything around here so uh yeah the uh strawberries are looking good radishes are coming up and uh let's go see if i'm getting any carrots yet not seeing any signs of uh carrots yet but uh boy the plants are looking really good and uh always always glad to see that uh by the way this whole area will have beauty bark as soon as we figure out how to get these uh, uh, blueberries and raspberries started, uh, I may have to try something different. I don't know yet, but I don't want the beauty bark in there yet. I got a kick out of a video I watched this morning. Um, I think they're called Sunny's Homestead. Uh, and uh, they seem like really nice people. Haven't really talked to them much. Um, nor have they approached us much either, but love to work with them and uh they were talking about the loneliness of uh homesteading and this isn't the first time i've ever lived out in the country <clears throat> and uh, uh my biggest shock was probably when i moved from washington when i lived i was in aerospace lived in the city uh kids were younger and we all moved out to the country because we wanted the kids to have better schools so we ended up here in central oregon and uh yeah i mean when you first get out here and you go oh i'll invite my friends they all love to come down here and i'll make sure we have a guest room and all that stuff and uh that's not the case uh and when they do come down the friends will treat it like a vacation which in a way it is because they're in the rat race and uh may not always understand 
why you do what you do. Um, unless, <laughs> unless they're in problems, having problems. Um, so yeah, it's kind of lonely because really your normal friends that you probably had in the city look at driving out to your area like an obstacle and then uh, they don't relate with the animals or, or food yet they enjoy them but they want to look at your places like a petting zoo let me buy a ticket and I want to leave when the ride's over um, so yeah I, it is more lonely but and but so so much more satisfying so when we do have guests here which we love guests uh, it's nice when the guests participate in, in, in things that are going on but they're not always used to this kind of stuff they're not used to working with animals and getting dirty and bugs and cleaning pens out and stuff so it's not unless it's theirs they probably don't enjoy it that much <clears throat> some do some people cross that line really well but uh, I've I've definitely I found myself to be a little bit more of a loner but yet the people I come across our community here uh, it seems like there's no uh, barriers and it doesn't matter I'm color race or any that kind of stuff it's uh the community is friendly and it's not unusual to walk up to the fence with a neighbor that's got a five acre place too and sit there for an hour and yak about stuff or when you're down having a, a beer in one of the little places we have here uh, everybody's super friendly and they're very curious about where you came from and what you're doing and uh, uh, yeah it's um, just like uh, uh, we went to a place called the uh, Big Dog uh, Saloon or Bar down here in uh, where we live. And actually, when I lived here the first time 20 years ago, uh, I was around when they first built it. So I kind of know a little bit of the history of it. Well, we finally went there again. And uh, there was a handful of people in there. And uh, uh, they were incredibly friendly. And the waitress was actually new to the uh, area, but we told her a lot of our history about this area. And she was fascinating, and she was uh, uh, engaged. Uh, I, I guess that's another thing down here, is the conversations are very engaging around here. Um, it, we quickly find what we have in common, and then we, you'll find very neat conversations and sharing. Uh, going on and then also the offer for help is always nearby I uh, finally met my neighbor back here finally which is another acre lot five acre lot down the road here down behind me turned out to be a super fascinating guy who used to have a great big farm uh, like 80 acres kind of thing and downsized because of his age and just has a little five acre place that it can manage a little easier and uh, but yeah the people um, the community of country living uh, it definitely stands out um, harder to meet people because it's not like you can see your neighbor they're not like my neighbors are that easy to spot and occasionally will happen to both be outside at the same time and uh, have a nice visit but you find the hardware store the little uh, local stores and stuff are more than just a store they're almost like family especially if you're dealing with them a lot like hardware stores and stuff like that so yeah i just kind of thought i'd share that with you and uh so let's go on throughout the day here and see what else we got going on we definitely need to uh plant some more broccoli one of the things i've noticed that i need out in the greenhouse is another bucket so i have a food grade bucket with a lid that what i want to do is have uh, some master blend mix already made to use for like the potato bags and uh, miscellaneous things so the other thing I'm gonna do is the tank that goes to the Dutch buckets uh, when I turned them on every Dutch bucket holds about one inch of water at the bottom so it was about two weeks before we fired up the Dutch buckets 
and I'm thinking there's still water in there. Well, it took a lot of the water from my tank. And so I want to add another five gallons to the main tank, but I need another bucket to do that and uh, and to pre-mix my master blend. So this is going to come in handy as a, a tool for the greenhouse. And uh, uh, I want to use a good high grade bucket. So this is probably more than I normally would want to spend for something like this but uh, I also want to keep everything as sanitary as possible so let's take this out to the greenhouse fill it up with five gallons of water put the master blend mix in it and uh, I'll use this the water I need to add five gallons of this to the tank main tank and then I want to make another five gallons to keep around to use for um, just sprinkling on plants that aren't in the system All right, so now I got the main tank, got five more gallons of uh, master blend in there. I feel a little better. And uh, now I'm gonna do another five gallons to keep in here to uh, water my uh, potatoes. <laughs> Brain's going 100 miles per hour here. So anyway, uh, after that, we'll probably plant some more uh, broccoli and maybe do one more experimental tomato from my batch and see how it does so ah uh, tippy toe at, at first here be cautious we are having very warm weather so everything might be doing great now what about next week so anyway we'll uh, we'll still be cautious but let me get this uh, next batch done and water the uh, potatoes and it'll all be good well I just got a the chickens water refilled again they weren't out of water but it was almost out so I had the water on back here so I may as well get that done and keep them happy because they're giving us lots of eggs and we appreciate it also fired up the uh, water system for the Walla Walla onions uh, they are looking a lot healthier and uh, I think it's I think the roots and everything are starting to kind of take I've got about five I gotta replace. I've told you that before. But uh, I like what I'm seeing. I think uh, it took a little while for these guys to kind of get set into the ground in the colder temperatures, but I think we're there. I do have another dilemma with the greenhouse and that's common for around here is uh, red ants. And uh, so throughout the property here, I'll show you one right here. These little guys are relentless. Now I have a, a, a mixture I use for red ants. And when, the, when you add water to it, it gets kind of milky. Uh, when I go back to the shop, I'll try to show you the brand. But it works really good. You just spray around the hole. Uh, and within a day, the whole, uh, the whole thing's gone. So we're going to hit two little holes over here. Because I'm finding I'm getting little red ants in my uh, greenhouse. And this will be a battle going on throughout the summer. All right, guys, I uh, just got done licking. This is the stuff I use for red ants. Uh, it's termite and carpenter ant killer. Uh, and uh, it works really good. It's kind of milky. And uh, all you have to do is squirt it around a hole within a few feet around it, a couple of times circular. And uh, next day they're gone. So it's good stuff. And it's also expensive but it's been worth every penny. So we've been uh, sticking with it. It's time for me to get some of this chicken feed to uh, the chicken pen. 
I did bring my uh, gorilla cart with me. I love this thing, by the way. I mentioned that before. And I did some uh, things out in the greenhouse. I'll show you here in a minute. So is it just me or are these bags sometimes hard to open? One, I was able to take the, <laughs> the little strip off, no problem. Another one, forget it, I had to cut it off with a knife. Well, let's take a, take a look in the greenhouse and I'll show you what we've done. So since I've had a little bit of success so far with my uh, beef tomato plant, I decided to go ahead and bring one of mine out, which is a jet setter and see how well it does so this is the beef and this is a jet setter and uh it may be in more shock uh than the beef is but uh we'll see how it does so i went ahead and added a couple more broccolis in here I've noticed that the first day they kind of tilt a little bit and are weak, but by the second day after they get some of that nutrients, they're uh, uh, doing well. And I got this one that got broken right here, but it still looks healthy. So we'll see if it can uh, make it. If not, I'll replace it. So yeah, we're starting to get a little more serious in here. Uh, the other thing is I got this other bucket full of extra nutrients. And I actually managed to get one more bag of potatoes planted right here. So, been busy. It's really hot in here. It's, uh, wow, 108 degrees. That's probably why. So, uh, yeah, so we got a little bit done. And I replaced some of those onions I said I needed to replace in the big garden. So, it's been a productive day. I also decided I'd better open up the back window and cool it off in here a little bit so yeah <laughs> it's toasty in here well we've had a pretty busy day some of the things we got to do tomorrow is uh i think i got to get the rest of my uh weed and feed about 100 150 pounds i need to get some uh worm castings and some manure fertilizer for one of our planter boxes uh so i can get that started and uh, I'm also uh, getting to a point where I need to get the uh, my Ghostbuster outfit, uh, my walking, my tank, and spray uh, uh, grass killer and weed killer in the driveways uh, before cheat grass and everything else gets out of control. And uh, that's not a bad job, but if it's hot out, uh, that tank gets pretty heavy. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to wrap it up here. I want to thank everybody for uh, watching. Uh, I love all the new subscribers. Welcome to the channel. Please leave your comments below and say hello. Tell us what you're up to. And uh, please take the time to like and subscribe and share our videos. That really helps us out. Um, it really does. So, liking, sharing, and subscribing. Uh, uh, and make sure you hit the little bell button so you uh, get notified when we have a new video. So guys, thank you very much. Have a blessed day. And until next time, bye now. Our videos are made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. Available at Amazon right now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.